Hola, buenos dias. <laughs> Two things I want to share with you before we get into the sermon. Number one, happy Mother's Day. Number two, I heard your cries as the Bruins won the series with the Blue Jackets. I watched the game in Mexico from a feed from the CBC, and it was a little blurry, but I could figure out what was going on. And uh, Aaron was watching it, and we had like a 30-second delay, and she would shout, and I'd say, what, what, what? And, oh, yeah, it's great, because, you know, it was just a mess. But anyway, um, it's good to be home. <laughs> it's really good to be home. And uh, when I was in, in uh, Mexico, uh, I went to the school, of course, to help learn Spanish, and it was a wonderful program, and, and I, I learned more than I, than I ever thought I would learn in, uh, in a couple weeks. But when we, in the school, we would have class from morning until early afternoon, and then we were all assigned a guide. And my guide's name was Angel. Angel. I had an angel for my guide. And um, after class, he would take me to different places, and we would walk all through the historical city of, of Puebla. Now, this is going to be a little different sermon than what I usually preach, so just kind of bear with me. You'll, you'll get it at the end, I hope. Um, so we would walk around. We'd walk all around the city of Puebla into the historical district. And, and if you've ever been to Mexico or Puebla, you know that traffic lights, stop signs, crosswalks mean absolutely nothing to anybody. It doesn't matter. They're all suggestions. And so there's times that I would walk to the street looking like the tourist, you know, looking around, and my guide would grab me by the arm and say, oh, come, come back, come back. And we'd walk another block, and he'd pull me back this way, and, and we'd go to buy something, and they'd say how much it cost, and I'd say, okay. And he'd be like, mm, no, 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 no bueno. And I'd say, okay, so I guess I'm not buying it there. And he would take me to different places where, where we're okay and safe to go to. And it was important that as his job as my guide was to make sure that I didn't get run over by a bus and that I was safe. And part of that was to protect me from where we were, but also to keep me from going where we weren't supposed to go, where there was danger. And I would turn a corner and I'd say, what's down here? No, 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 come this way, come on. And so his job was to keep me safe, to make sure that everything went okay. And so I kind of found it interesting that the scripture this morning was the 23rd Psalm. And I read the 23rd Psalm and I read the gospel and I was really planning on razzling you and dazzling you with skills of historic, of the gospel, of Jesus being in the portico of Solomon in the wintertime, and you were going to be so impressed. But then stuff happens. And experience was telling me that this is something to talk about with the Lord as our shepherd. So I'm going to tell you a story. This is a true story. I could not make this up if I wanted to. My trip was flawless. It was great. I had no problems. Really none. It was hot. And I don't like hot. But all in all, there were no problems. My flight was scheduled to leave from the airport in Puebla to go to Houston to come home on Thursday. My flight was scheduled to leave at 8 a.m. in Puebla. The airport is 45 minutes away from where I was staying. So I thought, I'll be smart and I'll get a hotel room right across the street from the airport. I'll go there the night before, check in the hotel, have a nice relaxing evening, get a shuttle scheduled for 6 a.m., go to the airport in Puebla, go home. Be home by 4 o'clock. Perfect plan, right? Went to school that morning, got up at 6. Now this all matters, so track with me. Got up at 6, had breakfast, went to school, did my little tour, my last tour. Went to the uh, hotel in the late afternoon. I had some Mexican money left. I wanted to spend all of my Mexican money. So I ate a lot. And I had like a whole table filled with food. I'm like, table for one. And I had everything. And I ate everything. And I had 300 pesos left. I had a 200 peso bill and a 100 peso bill. Went to my hotel room, showered unpacked some stuff, relaxed, watched a little TV. I watched the only English channel they had was CNN. I watched that for a little while, and I fell asleep at 9 o'clock. Aaron calls me at 9.30 and wakes me up. So, hey, how are you? I fell asleep, blah, blah, blah. Can't wait to see you. I want to come home. Got done with the phone call around 10. I look at my phone at 10 o'clock, and it says, there's been an update to your itinerary. Oh, that's cool. What could it be? 
And I look at it and it says, your plane is broken and now you're going to fly out four and a half hours later. So now we're at 1230. My first thought was, well, that's okay. That means I can sleep in. But then I realized that my plane leaving Houston was at 1215. It's a problem there, right? So now it's 1030. I call United, which if you've ever called the airlines, you don't just call them and have somebody say hello. I was on phone, I was on hold for 40 minutes listening to the United jingle, which doesn't make you happy after 40 minutes. You're just tired of it, right? So the lady answers the phone. I explain to her what's going on, and she says, well, it looks like you're not going to get home on Thursday. You can probably get home on Friday. And I felt like a five-year-old. I was a child. And I laughed at myself as I was saying this, because I said, but, but I want to go home. <laughs> and she said, well, you can't. But, but I, I want to go home. I want to go home tomorrow. I want to go home. You can't. Well, I've got to get home somehow. And she said, well, how far are you from Mexico City? Two hours. She said, well, you can fly out at 6.30 a.m. in Mexico City. I said, okay, okay, I'll do that. Not having any idea how I'm going to get to Mexico City. But I wanted to go home. So I make the plane reservation, get on my phone, and look for an Uber. There's like one guy driving an Uber this late at night who's willing to take somebody to Mexico City. And it says... He accepts the fare and says, I'll be there in 14 minutes. I'm like, perfect. That's enough time for me to get up, get dressed, put some pomade in my hair, pack my stuff, and get ready to go to the airport. Because I'm going to be up all night, right? I'm not going to sleep for two days. I get up, start packing my suitcase, and I get a notice. Ding! Where are you? I'm here. Hey! I'm throwing my stuff in the suitcase. I don't have time for pomade. I'm throwing water in my hair, right? I'm dragging my stuff out to the desk. At the hotel that I just checked in three hours earlier, now I'm checking out. I get in the car, we drive about five miles, and the driver says, I need money for tolls. How much money do you need? 300 pesos. Okay, perfect, I'm broke. Here's 300 pesos, right? So I give him 300 pesos, and it occurred to me at about midnight-ish. I'm in a car with somebody I don't know in the middle of Mexico at midnight going to an airport. I'm seeing federalities pulling cars over all over the place. And I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing here? This is not good. I've seen the movies. This is not a good thing. And I laughed. And he didn't speak any English, so everything that we're saying was trying to, I'm trying to say it in my broken Spanish. Hello? <laughs> and we get to the airport, and he says, Padre, I need 300 more pesos. Why? Because I have to get back. I said, I have no more money. I, I'm broke. He says, oh, it's okay, I'll take care of it. So I get out of the car, go to the airport, get my plane, fly to Houston, make it home at 4 o'clock. Guess what the name of my driver was? Jesus. Angel was my guide, and Jesus was my driver. <laughs> and here's where this all comes into reality for me. I was completely vulnerable. Completely vulnerable. I was nowhere near home. I didn't speak the language. I didn't know where I was. I was completely in somebody else's hands. I needed a shepherd. I needed somebody who was going to take care of me, who was going to protect me and not let anything bad happen and make sure I got to where I needed to go. And so as I'm reading the 23rd Psalm on the airplane, when I was preparing to razzle and dazzle you, I couldn't get past the Lord is my shepherd. I didn't, sometimes we don't need angel or Jesus. We need Jehovah. And sometimes in our lives we feel lost, we're afraid, we don't know where we are, we don't have any money, we're in the middle of Mexico trying to get home, in the Mexico of our lives, and Jesus is telling us, I've got you. I'm your shepherd. Our shepherd is not somebody driving a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> our shepherd is God. God is guiding us. God is directing us. And I love the very end of the gospel here. 
Now just listen to this. Listen. My sheep hear my voice. I know you. And you follow me. I give you eternal life. And you will never perish. No one will snatch you out of my hand because what my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of my Father's hand because the Father and I are one. When we're baptized and we're sealed and marked as Christ's own forever, we are His. And we don't have to be afraid of the future. We don't have to be afraid of what comes our way because our shepherd is God. Our shepherd is God incarnate, Jesus Christ who has come to hold us in the palm of his hand that when you're afraid, you're not lost. We just have to trust. We have to trust that even when we doubt that Jesus says, it's okay, you may have forgotten who I am, but I haven't forgotten who you are because you're still mine. You're still mine. You're my child. I love you. I'm going to protect you. Even though you may have gone far away, you're still mine. And I think sometimes it's like when we're sealed in baptism as Christ alone forever, it's kind of like one of those little infrared things, right? Like God sees it. We don't always see it sometimes. And we don't always remember that we're marked as Christ's own. And we don't always remember that we need a shepherd. But he's still walking with us because he has us in his hand. And that's a good feeling to know. So when you're lost and you're afraid, you have a shepherd. It may not be in hell or Jesus. But you have Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And that should give us hope. Amen.